Okay, so this is the Unit 3 seminar. Last time we focused on multiplication and division of rational expressions. Now we're going to switch over to adding and subtracting rational expressions. The good news is you may have found, even though there was a lot of factoring involved in Unit 2, it was much easier than your Unit 1 test. And Unit 3 is also very similar, okay? But you do have to switch over your brain. Right now you're used to factoring and canceling out. But when we are um, dealing with addition and subtraction, we are often, because rational expressions are kind of in the form of fractions, we are looking for the LCD. Can anyone tell me what that stands for, what that term stands for? LCD. Chris? Very good. Lowest common denominator, okay? And when we are looking for the lowest common denominator, we have to focus on uh, the binomials or the monomials which are in the original rational expressions, okay? So for this particular question, to find the lowest common denominator, because these two binomials do not share any factors, all I'm going to do is take the two binomials and multiply them together in the denominator. So I have x plus 2 times x plus 1. Not adding, I'm multiplying those binomials in the denominator. Now just because I'm writing them like that doesn't mean that you write a go right away and do FOIL. We still want to keep our expressions as much as possible. We want to keep everything in factored form, factored form. So keep that in mind. We are not using FOIL. We are not combining terms in the denominator, at least. Now, the trick to these questions is how do we deal with our terms in the numerator? So I don't want you writing anything down. I want you to look very closely at this next step because it's going to be very important for the rest of the questions, okay? So this term, my first rational expression, I have a 6 over here. What I'm going to ask myself is this particular rational expression, what is this denominator missing in order to match up or look like the lowest common denominator? It already has an x plus 2, so what is missing? Someone tell me. Vicky, what do you think is missing? I have an x plus 2, so what's the other binomial that's missing? Okay. <laughs> uh, does anyone know what binomial is missing? For this expression to look like this expression, what is missing in the denominator? x plus 1. Good. It already has an x plus 2. We have to multiply it by x plus 1 in order for it to look like the common denominator. So you're look, asking yourself for each term, what is it missing? I have a negative 5. Negative 5 for the second term. The negative 5 has an x plus 1 in the denominator. So what is it missing to have the lowest, match the lowest common denominator, Kyla? x plus 2. So that I have to multiply the negative 5 by x plus 2, okay? This is the process of coming up with my new numerator. So when we do this, What rule do I have to apply next? I have brackets and I have numbers outside of the brackets. So what rule do I need to apply? Starts with a D. Pamela? Good. The distributive property. So I have 6 multiplied by my X. And then I have positive 6 multiplied by 1. Then I have a negative 5 multiplied by X and negative 5 multiplied by positive 2. When we do that, I'm going to rearrange so my like terms are next to each other. 6x and positive 5x. And then I have the number positive 6. And negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. All over my denominator of x plus 2, x plus 1. 
So my final answer is just going to involve combining my like terms. 6x plus 5x is, do you see anything that's wrong? Um, 6x, sorry, good. It should be a minus 5x. Thanks for catching that. So my final answer is going to involve 1x. 6 minus 10 is going to give me a negative 4. And my denominator has x plus 2, x plus 1. Is there anything that I need to cancel out in the numerator and the denominator? No, because there are no terms that are common. So this would be my final answer. Now remember, we are still going to be stating restrictions based on the original question, but because we didn't have to cancel out anything, my answer also will have the same restrictions. So how many restrictions am I looking for for this particular question? Two, because I have two terms in my binomial. I have the x plus 2 and the x plus 1. So my first restriction, x plus 2 cannot be equal to 0. That means that x cannot be equal to negative 2. Then I have x plus 1 cannot be equal to 0. That means x cannot be equal to negative 1. And those are my two restrictions. Okay? Now, this is the answer to this question. If I had my final answer as x minus 2, then I would, uh, sorry, x plus 2, then I would be, have been able to cancel these terms out, okay? So you do still cancel if you see like terms in the question. This just wasn't the case for this particular question. Okay, can you guys write down the next one? This is going to involve a little bit of factoring. So go ahead and try to factor both, the, uh, both denominators, basically. And remember our difference of square rule, anything in the form a squared minus b squared is going to simplify to a plus b, a minus b. So I'm looking for students who can factor the trinomial as well as the binomial. Okay, what does a squared minus 9 factor to? Can someone tell me? a squared minus 9. Jamie? Um, a plus 3, a minus Good. a plus 3, a minus 3. And what about a squared minus 2a minus 3? What is that factor to? Kyla? A minus 3. Very good. a minus 3, a plus 1. Oh, <laughs> okay, a plus 3, a minus 3, a minus 3, a plus 1. Now, because the a minus 3 is already there, before I continue, I'm going to state my restrictions, okay? So I know that a minus 3 cannot be equal to 0. That repeats twice. So a cannot be equal to positive 3. That's one restriction. I also know that a plus 3 cannot be equal to 0, so a cannot be equal to negative 3. a plus 1 cannot be equal to 0, so a cannot be equal to negative 1. Okay, the next part is going to be a little bit tricky. I am going to ask you now... What is the common denominator, the lowest common denominator?